Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? It's a pleasure to have you all here finally after so many weeks of preparation for this wonderful webinar. My name is Martina Kije. I'm reaching out to you from San Francisco, California. I know a lot of you are tuning in from different parts of the world, sometimes Japan, other parts of the US, and just in general. You're all very welcome here. Very glad that we're gonna have this one hour and a half presentation. And without any further ado, let's get started. Just to provide you with a quick overview of who your hosts are for today. Again, already mentioned myself. We also have Mr. Shinichi from the, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, more specifically. Ms. Siegel from the NYCBC. Mr. JF from Sort of Genome. Mr. Komura from Vetro Cafe Tokyo, Ms. Abidova from Trusted Corporation, Mr. Luigi from Entity Docomo, who is actually not here today, we'll only be hearing a recorded lecture from him. And last but not least, Ms. Megumi. So thank you all for being here today again. Let's get started with this webinar. Awesome. So just to kick it off, we're going to provide you with a few points for today. Today's agenda, just 12 points for you. We're going to dive right in after this with an introduction by TMG, right? Mr. Shinichi san will be taking charge. Later on, you will be able to hear a couple of panels and their speakers from the NYC ABC first, the startup genome. And later on, I will be taking charge with Better Cafe Tokyo and Trusted Corporation to tell you more about the Tokyo's market and its wonderful opportunities out there. By the way, you will have the opportunity to be asking questions. There will be a question and answer session after each one of these panel sessions. So please hold on tight for that. Later on, as mentioned, we will be having a recorded lecture by Mr. Uh, from Entity Docomo. And later on, of course, you will be able to ask your questions just later on, please hold tight. Last but not least, we will have a few wrap-up calls, a few wrap-up comments from TMG to tell you more about our programs with Ms. Megumi. And yes, as mentioned, you will have the opportunity to ask further questions in the Q&A session at the end. Next slide, please. Perfect, so let me get started right ahead just by asking you a question, really. I would love to know which kind of agenda from the ones, all the different points that I have mentioned interests you the most by this point. We'd love to hear your comments. Let me just launch the poll right now via Zoom. And we'll give you a little bit of time for you to respond. We would really much appreciate your response. So which agenda interests you the most today? Potentially the TMG message at the very beginning or later on, we will talk about the Tokyo market. Again, we have two amazing panels ready for you. Later on, we'll have the recorded lecture by Entity Docomo and just wrap up an overview of TMG's support programs. All right, so I see almost all of you answered. Appreciate it. And just to share what we've seen, it's mostly the first panel uh, panel session that we will be having that garners most of your attention. Perfect then, so let's get started. First of all, on next slide, please, first and foremost, we're going to have Mr. Fukunaga. Please, Mr. Fukunaga, take the floor. 
So thank you. Uh, hi everyone. I am Fukunaga Chinichi from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Thank you for thank you very much for joining our online event, Tokyo Innovation is Everywhere today. I would like to start my opening remarks with a video message from Koike Yuriko, Governor of Tokyo. Hello everyone, I'm Koike Yuriko, Governor of Tokyo. Thank you very much for your interest in Invest Tokyo. In addition to the growing climate crisis, we now face a range of threats posed by infectious diseases, natural disasters, and cyber terror, not to mention the increasingly complex international situation. To achieve sustainable growth and a sustainable recovery from the pandemic, innovation is vital to transform these challenges into opportunities. I'm certain that for Tokyo's companies and talent to collaborate with overseas companies and entrepreneurs will serve as a driving force for innovation. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government has recently launched Team Tokyo Innovation through daily interaction with startups and partnership with the national government and business organizations we will work to develop effective policies. As a hub for industry, academia, and government, we will leverage Tokyo's potentials to advance open innovation, and we will expand all effort to support those considering doing business in Tokyo. We have prepared support tailored to your needs at each stage of business development. Those details will be presented later on. So please take note of what Tokyo can do for your business. Tokyo is a safe, clean, and attractive city to conduct business in. It's very environment friendly with low crime rates, not to mention full of opportunities to start doing business. We are eager to work with you seize this opportunity and come to Tokyo and look forward to seeing what we can accomplish together. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimashita. So thank you for watching. Uh, as Governor Koike mentioned open innovation, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government recognizes that creating new services is a key factor to opening the future. And startups like you are important partners to realize it. In February next year, we will host a new event called City Tech Tokyo with startups, VCs, and other participants under the theme of City Tech for a Sustainable Future. Tokyo is an attractive city full of business opportunities. If you are interested in our support services, please contact our business support desk, Access to Tokyo. I truly hope that today's event will be fruitful for everyone. We are grateful to New York City Economic Development Corporation and Startup Genome for their generous cooperation in organizing this event. I'd like to take this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude. Thank you very much. Please enjoy this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Fukunaga. It's been a pleasure hearing from you and hearing from the wonderful governor of Tokyo. Let's switch gears moving forward then to the what seems to be the most compelling part of this webinar. Next slide, please. Yes, so now we have a treat for you in the house. Thank you so much again, everyone involved for this wonderful discussion in this panel. I'll let Mr. JF take it from here. Thank you so much. 
thank you so much and it's uh i cannot start my video unfortunately but thank you so much for having us and uh, it's my pleasure to be here along with uh, two great guests i'm jf gautier ceo and uh, founder of startup genome the world leading innovation policy advisory and research firm we advise about ministries and innovation agencies across 45 countries all over the world to help them create an engine of job creation and economic growth for our populations, for our societies. And I have with me Ms. Daria Siegel, Vice President at New York City EDC, one of the best economic development and innovation management agencies in the world, and Ms. Fujita Megumi who is Director for Attraction of Foreign Companies Strategic Projects Division at the Office of the Governor for Policy Planning. So it's my pleasure to have you with, with me today. And so I have a first question for you, for you both. The first question that I think is very useful to, to have as a foundation for this discussion is why do startup ecosystems matter? I'm happy to start. Yeah. Uh, thanks, JF, and, and thank you for having me today. Um, so I'm Darius Siegel. I'm a vice president here at the New York City Economic Development Corporation. We're a mission-oriented uh, nonprofit, actually, focused on serving as the economic development engine for New York City. Uh, and I lead our tech initiatives um, for New York City. Uh, for us, we've been investing in the tech sector for over a decade because we really understood uh, if we weren't focused on diversifying our economy, we weren't going to be a resilient city and resilient community. Uh, traditionally, New York City is known for kind of what we call fire industries, finance, insurance, and real estate. And when the economic downturn happened, you know, we weren't in a very good position. So focusing on innovation, how do we innovate our legacy industries that New York is known for? Um, how do we focus on clustering technology companies and bringing those industries to New York to become more innovative, more resilient, and create good jobs for New Yorkers to participate in the future economy it was sort of the crux of of why we feel that startup ecosystems matter. Thank you so much. Ms. Megumi. Yes, thank you very much. I'm Megumi Fujita, uh, a director of uh, attracting foreign companies to Tokyo, uh, working for the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Uh, as this question from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government's perspective, uh, it is necessary to achieve a sustainable growth in the future. And for that, uh, continuous improvement and growth in industries is essential. To keep up with the changing times, an economic model must also be able to quickly adapt and respond to adversity. Looking at the neighboring countries, we are already observing the startups launching new solutions to respond to the modern demands of the day. In Tokyo, I believe it is essential to develop a system where uh, startups, uh, which are currently less well known, will be able to develop into Japan's top businesses and eventually scale globally. This is due to the nature of the startup's ability to swiftly address the needs and challenges of the modern world. That is why it is important to establish a world-class startup incubation system to launch new business, uh, business ventures, to develop effective business models, and to sub solve real-world problems by establishing a positive growth cycle in which new industries and businesses are born one after another from Tokyo and realizing sustainable growth in Tokyo, we will continue to the development of Japan and the resolution of global issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and you know, at Startup Genome and also the Kaufman Foundation, we've measured that startup ecosystems have already become the number one engine of job creation and economic growth in our modern economies and will soon become the number one sector across global economies. So when we don't invest aggressively in them, then we hurt the competitiveness of our economies and the opportunities that we offer to the, the current, the new and the future generations alike. So then I'd like to really understand what does your startup ecosystem look like in, in Tokyo and in New York City? Ms. Yes. Siegel. Sorry. 
Sure. Um, so I would say uh, it's very dynamic in New York City, which is very exciting. We have over 25,000 tech enabled startups that call New York City home today. Um, over $50 billion was invested in our tech ecosystem just in 2021. And that was three times the growth of 2020. Um, and we are, thanks to Startup Genome, we are ranked as the number two global startup ecosystem in the world, uh, which is very exciting for us. And you can really feel that sense of dynamism here in New York. Uh, we have over 100 incubators and accelerators and over 200 co-working spaces here throughout the five boroughs. Um, and I think one of the reasons why tech companies and startups want to be here, um, one of many reasons, I should say, is the access to customers. So the access to industry and the access to, you know, our population of nearly 9 million people that reside here in New York City. And those industries that are here are also really diverse. We're not a single industry town. Uh, we have real estate. We have fashion. We have um Life sciences is emerging industry, um, you know, on and on, and, and tech is innovating all of those legacy industries. I should mention media, particularly. Um, additionally, I think something that's really unique about the New York City tech ecosystem is how diverse it is. Uh, we have a long way to go to ensure that our tech ecosystem grows equitably. However, um, we are more diverse in our tech workforce than Boston and San Francisco combined. Um, and I think that really... Um, you know, changes the, the outlook of what types of companies are here, um, that they're focused on inclusivity and lots of different populations um, that call New York home. So that's a little bit about our, our ecosystem here at EDC. We invested in a lot of those things that I mentioned, um, including like step out spaces, office space, incubators. Um, and we also attracted uh, an applied science campus to come to New York City to ensure we're building the skills that are needed to fill these jobs of the future. So Cornell Tech has been here in New York City for the last decade. Um, and of course, we have all our legacy research institutions, Columbia, NYU, CUNY, and others, making for a really dynamic uh, work ecosystem. Thank you so much. Ms. Megumi. Yes. Um... As for Tokyo, in March last year, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government decided to adopt a long-term plan named the Future Tokyo Strategy. This strategy intends to make Tokyo a startup innovation hub by 2040, where new industries would be continuously established. Then the, to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government has established the to Startup Ecosystem Tokyo Consortium as an organization to promote, uh, con to build a startup X system, which was certified uh, by the Japanese cabinet office as one of the global heavy cities in Japan. Furthermore, the startup X system Tokyo consortium aims to establish itself as a global heavy city for the startup X system. It also aims to leverage the diverse industrial clusters in Tokyo and greater Tokyo area as a platform to create new business connections, strengthen international competi competitiveness, startup incubations, and ultimately achieve sustainable economic growth for Tokyo. With the implement implementation of the, these startup initiatives, we hope to contribute to the welfare for, of the society as well. Let me uh, introduce Tokyo Consortium's five unique features. The first point is creating connections. It provides networking opportunities among diverse players to create new connections and promote our innovation through broad participation from large corporations to small and medium-sized enterprises. The second point is information sharing and infrastructure enhancement. It indeed identifies the actual status of diverse resources, shares information and provides support to ensure that information is delivered in a timely manner. The third point is its effort to, for a more visible and attractive Tokyo. This aims to widely publicize Tokyo's startup system and visibly attract foreign companies, foreign startups and investment to the city. Fourth point is cooperation with the national government. As a global strategic city, Tokyo will contribute to Japan's growth strategy and cooperate in timely deregulation, overseas PR, and so forth. 
Last is a wide area collaboration. It will realize a wide range of function through collaboration with the cities in the Tokyo metropolitan area. Basically, the main members of the Tokyo Consortium are private businesses, economic organizations, universities, research institutions, venture capitalists, startups, and local governments. We have wide range of uh, members. As one of as the as of the end of August, uh, we have no less than three hundred eighty six organizations. In addition, the project includes twenty universities, including the top university like the Tokyo. University of Tokyo and other major universities in Japan, as well as various industry associations, such as the Japan Business Federation, which is comprised of famous Japanese companies and other influential academic and business organizations in Japan. That is how the sort of system in Tokyo is constructed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have today two fantastic uh, metropolises, you know, New York and in Tokyo that have such a great industrial and economic base that as soon as New York and Tokyo started investing in the startup ecosystems, we saw the results of startup genome with Tokyo and with New York being number seven, about six, seven years ago and climbing to number two very rapidly and Tokyo making an, a, a very impressive uh, climb also uh, up to number 12 this year uh, from you know, 30th, I think, uh, six, seven, eight years ago. So fantastic economies and fa fantastic strategies and execution to climb those those ranks in face of a lot of great global competition. I want to ask you uh, uh, next, what is the vision for the future of each city? Ms. Segal, maybe we can start us sure. off. <laughs> uh, happy to. I think there are a number of things that we're really focused on at NYC EDC to continue to grow the tech sector. It's matured, as I mentioned, over the last 10, 15 years. And so we really want to enable future technologies to grow here, but as I was mentioning, to grow equitably. We're excited about the diversity that we have here in New York City. And I think that's you know, a really um, competitive advantage that we have to capture. And we need to focus on um, uh, startups who are led by women and people of color to ensure that they have the opportunity to succeed to raise capital um, as much as their counterparts. So that's a really big focus for us is diversity, equity, inclusion within the tech sector in New York City in, in the coming years. Additionally, I think we're focused on just the diversity of industries in the tech sector here. So having a robust ecosystem. So we wanna have those unicorns, we wanna have those IPOs, but we also wanna have all those early stage startups too, cause that's it's a really cyclical process. And, and we wanna ensure that there's opportunities for both late stage and early stage companies here across different tech sectors. I'd say in terms of sectors, we're really excited about the growth of the green economy and climate tech in New York City. I think there are a lot of local laws coming down uh, that will really enable the growth of those sectors in New York City in the coming years. And similarly um, with life sciences and med tech. Um, additional items for our future is one thing we're excited about is we've dabbled in piloting for startups, having opportunities for pilots. And we've done that through a lot of civic challenges civic innovation challenges, but we really want to create um, opportunities for more startups to be able to pilot and get gain government contracts. We think that's a market they haven't been able to access. And so we're looking at how do we, um, you know, clear those those hurdles of making it really challenging to procure with the city of New York. And I think that's a really big opportunity here. Um, so those are a few. Um, I will also add um, in no small effort is tech workforce generally is ensuring that early education is happening in STEM and that uh, New Yorkers in K through 12 are getting um, exposed to the tech sector at an early age so they can build those skills to, to fill those jobs of the future. So I brushed over that quickly. That's actually some major undertakings there that we're really excited to continue to, to build a really smart and diverse tech sector moving forward. Thank you, very impressive. Ms. Megumi, what's the vision for the future of Tokyo? Yes, uh, let me talk about how the Tokyo Consortium will proceed as it is an important initiative in Tokyo's ecosystem. Uh, the Tokyo Consortium can be summed in four points. First, it aims to create a forum for practical business sharing. 
the consortium will consider measures to ease regulations that hinder the promotion of startups. In addition, regarding a place for middle and later startups to share uh, practical information, a uh, community will be formed and the mechanism to share knowledge on fundraising will be discussed. Secondly, the consortium promotes business partner matching between companies as a, mean, as a means of generating sales for startups. We will co also consider measures to promote procurement from startups by large, comp uh, large enterprises and others. Moreover, the consortium will consider how to respond to the SME's growing, this growing, matching, growing matching needs with startups through DX support in terms of diverse collaboration. Thirdly, the consortium is willing to offer information to overseas. We will examine the methods and other aspects to provide Tokyo's existing information, including the contents of information and collaboration with other uh, companies' initiatives. Lastly, the consortium will be developing entrepreneurship program involving universities and consortium members. We will also consider creating the contract, the contact point between entrepreneurs and students and creating opportunities for discussions involving a variety of stakeholders. Based on what I was talking about, we aim to achieve sustainable growth of the city of Tokyo and improve the quality of life for the Tokyo's residents. For this purpose, we will work harder to create an ecosystem that accelerates a positive cycle leading to the growth of startups. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So maybe now we'll go to questions from the audience. And I see a question about you know, special visas for startup ventures. I wanna ask Ms. Siegel, how does EDC support the many startups coming to New York City to penetrate the US market? Absolutely. Um... We do have a business development team um, that is really focused on how to um, help support the growth of international companies expanding to New York, I should say domestic companies as well, to build a presence in New York City. Um, and we do offer a number of services in the business development team. So one is site selection. So if you're looking for office space, we can help support you um, and work with our partner network to find the space in the borough that's right for you. Uh, we support on workforce development. So if you are moving to New York and you don't know how to build that talent pool that you need for your company to grow, we can help connect you with the, the workforce providers to staff up your team here in New York. Thirdly, we also offer a number of incentives or as of right incentives to grow your business, to build and grow your business in New York City, uh, particularly focused on the outer borough. So we can just uh, share out all the information about those incentives that are available to you um, and you know how to make sure that you're eligible for those as of right incentives. Additionally, on, on my team, beyond the biz dev team um, and the tech team, we're really focused on supporting you through wayfinding. Um, so it can be a little overwhelming to, to set up shop in New York and not know who are the players you should talk to, what are the events you should go to, what, who's part of the ecosystem, um, especially in different sectors. And so we're really here to support you. So you, the day you come here, you can feel really plugged into the ecosystem. Um, because it's so vast, it, um, it, it can be a little hard to sort through it all. So we're here to help you wayfind through that. What about support for visas? Any, any support that you offer? Yeah, we're figuring out what our next steps are there. We have previously had a program called Into NYC that was a partnership with some of our local universities, um, and that was a way to support on visas. Um, on, you know, it's a challenge because it is a federal issue, um, but it's something we're very interested in, in trying to support. Great, thank you. Ms. Megumi, how can we join the Tokyo Consortium, uh, I'm being asked by the audience? What are the benefits of joining also? Yeah, thank you very much. It is a very important question. If you wish to become a member of Tokyo Consortium, please contact the Secretariat in advance. Uh, one of the benefits of the becoming member is you can access the information on the ecosystem in Tokyo. Although uh, we will ask for your cooperation in various efforts to uh, establish a ecosystem in Tokyo area, as a condition for 
such membership, we are welcoming all overseas startups. Thank you so much. And uh, maybe also what, what kind of support is available from companies entering that consortium? And we have about 15 seconds left, so maybe a couple of points on yep. that. Yeah, thank you. Good question. For example, you can get opportunities to make a connection with related companies and startups when participating participating in the events. In addition, you can obtain information on some events or organized by Tokyo Consortium members. The Tokyo Consortium provides the platform for all members to have such kind of opportunities. Thank you so much. And that's all the time we have. Thank you so much to both of you and back to our fantastic MC. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jaya, for the compliments. And thank you both as well, Ms. Siegel and Ms. Mugumi, for your participation here today. I'm sure there was there were many more questions, and folks will have the chance to ask more later if they want. Appreciate it. So thank moving you. forward, we have the second panel session. Now we will be finally talking more regarding a specific cases, business cases, real life scenarios that have taken place in the past. From Mr. Yusuke San from Venture Cafe Tokyo and Ms. Avidova from Trusted Corporation. Welcome both of you. Hello. Good evening, Hello. everyone. Good morning, whoever is in Tokyo. Good evening. Good, good evening, Mr. Komura. Very glad to have you here as well. So let's get started right away, shall we? Yes, yes. Thank you for having us today. Next slide, please. Let's just get started right away. If you could provide a quick introduction then regarding your specific role, your company, so you could tell us more, a bit about your background. For Ms. Abudova first, how about we start with you? Yes, thank you so much, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm Fariza Abidova. I'm from Uzbekistan originally, but living in Japan for 18 years now. I came to Japan to study at Kobe University. And after graduating, I started my own business 12 years ago. I started two companies in Tokyo. And I could see the changes of uh, Japanese business environment over the 12 years. And I'm happy to share my lessons learned from our experience. So um, Trusted Corporation is an innovation consulting company based in Tokyo and Switzerland. We are connecting large uh, Japanese and European companies with startups uh, on concrete projects. We basically design uh, the project strategies, KPI roadmaps, and we involve startups with concrete schedule and budget so that we can you know, uh, have like POCs. And after the POCs, we want to make sure it goes to the implementation stage. In the middle, we are adjusting, you know, bridging the cultures, communication, doing project management. Uh, all hands on. And if your company is interested in working with large Japanese companies, feel free to reach out to me through LinkedIn and Facebook. Thank you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. Pleasure to hear from you again. Thank you. Ryusuke san, how are you today? And um, please provide us with a brief overview of what you do. Sure. Uh, can I use my slice? Absolutely. Please go right ahead. Okay. Uh, right. Hello, uh, my name is Rusuke Kamura, uh, the director of Venture Cafe Tokyo. Uh, so from now on, I'd like to uh, introduce about a bit of myself and then, you know, about Venture Cafe. And uh, since 2018, I've been leading the establishment of uh, Tokyo chapter of Venture Cafe, uh, which is the global innovation community builder uh, that originated to Boston. Uh, you know, next, please. The slide. Yes, and our mission is connecting innovators to make things happen. Um, you know, it has become quite a, a shared understanding for everybody that you know, without collaborations, you cannot really create innovation. So we are 
that's what we do. You know, we are trying to connect people to make something happen. And how do we do that? Uh, next, please. So, which is Thursday gathering? Uh, so we host this massive social meetup with learning and a connecting opportunity uh, every Thursday uh, from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at the location called CSE Tokyo, uh, which is located in the heart of Tokyo. And we are averaging uh, about 330 people every Thursday, every week, right? Uh, so uh, I believe uh, this has be been you know, the great opportunity for, for you to, um, or for everybody to expand their you know, personal network within Tokyo. Uh, next, please. And even outside of Tokyo, we run our satellite programs uh, in major regions in Japan, like Nagoya, Tsukuba, Osaka, and Gifu. Uh, next, please. And speaking a bit, a bit about numbers, uh, so for the last five years, you know, from 2018, over 70,000 innovators participate in our activity. And I, I'm pretty sure that we have a, established the certain recognition of, of ourselves that you know, uh, being uh, one of the largest innovation community uh, within Japan. Uh, next, please, uh, can you go to the slide of CAC? So lastly, I'd like to touch a little bit upon our sister organization, CAC Tokyo. Uh, so next, please. So CAC Tokyo is, is the Japan's largest innovation hub with the space of over 6,000 square meters. And currently, over 200 companies are using you know, uh, CIC Tokyo as their own office. That includes a, you know, a domestic and overseas uh, startups or uh, overseas institutions like embassy, chamber of commerce, you know, or major companies. Uh, so next, please. This is going to be the last slide. So in a nutshell, uh, CIC Tokyo holds another rich innovation ecosystem within Japan. So uh, if you're looking to Tokyo uh, as your potential you know, expansion location, uh, I'm pretty sure CIC Tokyo is the place that you want to check out. So uh, that's basically it about, uh, for myself. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, yusuke san for that amazing introduction. Right. Could we please... Um, go back to the slides. Fantastic. All right, so moving right ahead into the heart of this conversation, love to talk a bit more regarding specifically the upsides of working in this Tokyo environment, specifically for business, right? Ms. Abidova-san, what are your thoughts regarding this specific topic? What, what have you experienced in the past? What can you tell us regarding the upsides of this environment in Tokyo? Definitely. Briefly to share, like from my experience running two companies over the 12 years, I saw both a super traditional way of doing business in Japan. And now for the last two years, I would say like startup mindset is here and like large companies are willing to work with uh, third parties. So when I started my business first time, like especially large companies were doing the innovation and technology research and development, everything was in house. They were hiring all the researchers, all the basically depending on their own resources and working for small companies with large companies was almost impossible. They were working only with like big brands, you know, that was the traditional way of doing business. And the decision-making was slow and reaching to the executive level, it was almost impossible unless you have really strong network, right? But I would say for the last few years, since the startup ecosystem started to shape in Tokyo and people's mindset uh, became more open to you know, collaboration with third parties and, you know, open innovation, like mindset started to shape. Now everything is changing so fast, you know, in Japan, like compared to other ecosystem, I would say, uh, you know, it took a slower start, but now it's changing really fast compared to other ecosystems. Like we work both in Europe because we have office in Switzerland. We are like working mainly with, uh, Germany, France, Switzerland, and all these countries. I would say 
you know, once Japan starts to like be interested in, you know, uh, innovation and projects and they uh, start slow, but once it starts, it's really fast, right? And uh, I would say in the beginning, like for the last four years, uh, Japanese large companies were uh, started to be interested in, you know, checking what is this, you know, startup ecosystem, what is open innovation, because this was kind of new concept. And thanks to Venture Cafe, Comrasan's hard work and CIC opening office here, we are also part of CIC, we have office in CIC as well. Uh, they started to organize a lot of events, having like speakers and networking and like bringing all the ecosystem members in one place. This was completely new for Japan. And, you know, uh, there was like big hype because Venture Cafe started their activities four years ago. And at that time, Japanese companies were curious, but they were not ready to take action. They were just checking the atmosphere right is it something for us like how we can benefit from it so they were checking gathering information meeting people but uh we couldn't design anything concrete but for the last one year i would say we are receiving a lot of inquiries from even largest brands from like even executive level directly to companies small like us for example we are only five people like saying we want to work with startups now, but we don't know how to, like, can you help us, right? So this is huge progress, you know, like considering only four years ago, even the concept of innovation or startups started to, you know, shape in Japan and they're already like uh, taking action. So I'm super excited. So many things changing fast, like even governments, we are directly advising to the Minister of Economy, like until now, we didn't even have chance to even enter in those buildings, right? Like they're asking us like how we can create good environment for international entrepreneurs like yourself. What was your experience? Like how we can make a uh, good visa, you know, environment tax and like fundings. So all like, not only me, but there are a lot of like foreigners now working with Minister of Economy to create good environment for international entrepreneurs. I think this environment will uh, be like really better over the years, but in a very speedy way, I would say. Thank you. Oh, well, yes, that sounds really exciting to hear. Honestly, it's gaining traction in this specific ecosystem, right? Yes. Because what is your opinion regarding this topic? What, what are your thoughts? What are your reactions regarding what we have just discussed? And do you have any personal feedback as well? Right. Uh, so but before addressing the question from you, uh, I think uh, I have to thank Fariza for saying good about Venture Cafe and then being a precious member of, like, you know, com our community member. So thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, to your question, uh, so majorly there are two, two points that I want to argue. argue. Uh, so the first, uh, Tokyo is a massive cluster of major enterprises of every industry. And then actually over 2,000 listed companies are headquartered in Tokyo. And also, you know, Tokyo is a political and administrative center of the country. And many major universities of Japan are in the city too, right? So uh, I would say it is almost like uh, combining New York, DC, Silicon Valley, and Boston. And uh, if you're a startup or you know, if you're not, uh, that means, you know, it is very much convenient and productive uh, for you uh, as you can meet almost all the stakeholders you want, you know, uh, just within Tokyo. I think this is the uh, goodness of, of Tokyo. And then the second point is, um, as, you know, Parisa said, Tokyo is changing and then Tokyo holds a dynamic ecosystem that generates and supports the high impact startups. Uh, on media, you know, we oftentimes see the number of unicorns are around 10 in Japan. Um, you know, however, you know, uh, and which is the, you know, relatively less compared to the size of nation's GDP. However, in Japan, there's a business practice that startups choose to IPO in relatively earlier phase. Um, you know, so uh, with that said, 
uh, if you count all those young listed companies who have decided, you know, to uh, to IPO in their early stages, the number of startups, you know, exceeding the market cap of a billion dollars is actually over fifty, and this number is actually more than that of uh, Britain or Germany. So I think this number is pretty much showing the vigorousness of uh, Tokyo's innovation ecosystem, uh, regardless of if you are an investor or entrepreneur. So uh, that's the so the, it's not really personal experience, but uh, that's the overview that I see uh, from my experiences uh, uh, at Venture Cafe, uh, and then those are the two points that I wanted to point out. Thanks. Oh, it's absolutely great to hear. I mean, also getting to learn a bit more regarding your both of your perspectives really about this topic. Appreciate it. So, how about we move on to talking perhaps a bit more regarding the challenges of what it's been running a business in the city of Tokyo. What kinds of challenges have you seen going on in the past that companies have personally faced? What, what do you believe have been the primary factors that have affected their journey? Ms. Abilova, can we start with you again? Definitely. So I would say uh, language barrier would be the biggest challenge for uh, international startups entering Tokyo, still like uh, English, you know, when we are designing innovation projects and involving uh, startups globally, usually it's very difficult um, if uh, startups don't have at least one staff who can speak Japanese, right? So if you are focusing on Japan, definitely try to hire someone who is bilingual. But I would say most of uh, companies we are working now on, like ma mainly our clients are in automotive industries, chemical industries, logistics, and smart city projects. I would say out of 10, nine uh, companies, innovation teams, uh, they speak perfect English. They've been like abroad and uh, they studied abroad. So depends on the industries you know you are focusing on if your contact person at large companies will be like new business development team or innovation team uh, they can speak english so communication will not be problem but uh, if you work with like for example r&d or like other departments like um, really tech uh, it's better to have someone bilingual in your team and I would say in the long run, finding human resource would be another challenge. Like uh, I'm facing that as well. Basically, uh, you know, there are very few still like human resources who has the combination of skills of like being first bilingual and then who understands like startups mindset, what is startup business and innovation and like project management and you know communication skills like cross-cultural communications it's very difficult to find this kind of human resources uh i would say definitely uh hire people in japan at least who are bilingual and train them so even if you want to scale right away here probably you face this uh, shortage of uh, human resources a very interesting insight, to be honest. I also thought perhaps language could be one of those primary factors, right? And I see that it certainly is. Risuke san, what, what do you believe are some of the challenges that startup owners would face when transferring to Tokyo? Well, uh, actually, my answer to the question pretty much resonates uh, to the question, uh, to the answer, you know, from Parisa. Uh, so one major challenge is uh, finding a right translator uh, who can localize your business mm -hmm. to the Japanese market. And then, of course, that could be a, you know, a country manager or business consultant that helps you to you know, enter the Japan market, right? And like other economies, Japan, of course, has uh, different business practices and culture. Maybe one you know, famous example is like uh, distributing business cards you know, when you introduce yourself like that you know uh, we have different business practices here and but however if you look at the talents the number of talents or those talents who can speak both english and Jap japanese uh competently competently in business scene and understand the all those differences of business practices in both countries uh america and japan is is, is actually not many right 
uh, business practices, right, in both countries is, not, is actually not many. So uh, finding a right, you know, a talent who can catalyze the market in your business is, uh, I, I think, one major challenge. I see. Just to be mindful of time, I'd love to hear more regarding this specific topic. I would just love also to hear what are the specific steps someone needs to take to first tap into this business ecosystem? You know, for those new startup owners entering Tokyo, could you give me a brief answer on your reflections? Ms. Abedova, can we start with you first? Definitely. I would say before, of course, expanding your business, I would suggest to come to Tokyo and uh, explore the you know, ecosystems that we have in Tokyo, definitely come to CIC and say hi to us. And it is the largest innovation and startup uh, community in Tokyo. So that would be the first starting point. And if you're interested in entering uh, from other prefectures, like there are some clusters in Osaka, Kobe, Fukuoka, and it's expanding in other places, definitely come and visit talk to the ecosystem members like us, like Komura-san, and you'll get like clear insights and we will introduce you to the right people you need to meet and uh, gather the information. And if you find someone you trust and you know you wanna explore the market at least with one person, then slowly you can you know navigate the market and invest further. I see. That sounds like great advice. Bisuka san what are your thoughts regarding this first step to enter the, the ecosystem? Thank you. Well, so I have nothing to add actually to the Farizer point, but I would so, like to say, yeah, well, exactly the same, you know, as what I wanted to say. But uh, I would like to say, you know, come to our Thursday gathering, you know, uh, that happens every Thursday, or any other startup innovation communities. You know, maybe five years ago, there are not many of those communities, but now, you know, in each major neighborhood of Tokyo, there are uh, mm -hmm. communities you know, like that, you know, you can participate without membership. Say, Toronto, of course, we are there, you know, there's a Venture Cafe CIC in Shibuya, there's queues, you know, in Nihonbashi, Links J over there. So, uh, yeah, just join those communities and just, and then to start exploring Tokyo's innovation ecosystem. So that's my, yeah. Uh... Your two cents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And last but not least, I'd just love to ask you, could it be possible for you to give the audience a rapid fire kind of answer on any last tips, tricks, advice, anything that you would like to offer them, any kind of feedback that they could take away from, from this conversation? Yeah, I'll start first. I saw in the question and answer session, there were a lot of questions regarding visa and tax. Um, I'll, I would suggest instead of doing all the paperwork yourself, like from my experience, I always hired local expert Japanese people who can help you with the visa procedures and tax accounting, everything, because all the paperwork will be done in Japanese and they're not so expensive. Like uh, if you pay $1,000, they do all the paperwork for you. It's not so difficult as everyone may, like thinks Jap getting Japanese uh, working visa or business. I have business investors visa. Uh, it's not so difficult, but everything is in Japanese. Just hire expert and it's not so expensive. And uh, trips and uh, tips and you know advice would be uh, more Japanese people are now uh, starting to network through LinkedIn. I would suggest to reach out to anyone directly and like tell what you are planning to do in Tokyo and uh, they will help you connect to the right person. So just reach out and you can send the first message in English, it's not a problem. Whoever is on LinkedIn, they can communicate in English. So yeah, basically feel free to reach out to anyone and we are happy to help you to come to Tokyo. Thank you so much for today. No, it sounds like wonderful advice again. Ryusuke san, could you give us a rapid fire 30 second answer, please? What are your thoughts regarding this advice that you could finally give to the audience? Well, uh, yes, um, very simply. Uh, so Tokyo is one of the largest economies in the world. Uh, and in the, it has a very rich culture, 
the QOL is very high. Um, so if you're interested in Tokyo as your potential, you know, expansion, uh, I just would like to say, why, why, why are you waiting? You know, just, just come, right? The, it, it, recently, the borders has just opened up. So uh, it's a great time for you to come over. So uh, just come, take an action. So that, that's, 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 that's my advice. That's right, the future is today, as they say. So finally, we will have an opportunity to take some of the questions that our audience members have posted us. Let me provide you with some of these and see which one we could pick. Okay, so one of the questions that people have been asking us have to do with how do you assess success, right? What strategies have led to such success and how do you measure it more specifically? Either of you, do you have any specific feedback? Uh, what, what do you mean by success here? Like success of uh, Japan entry? Yes, I believe that's what the, that's what the audience member is referring to. I can go first. Um, basically, uh, Japan market is the very long term and stable market, like in terms of innovation. If you have a technology or startups in a field that uh, you need stable partner who has, uh, you know, high quality and, you know, the mindset of like innovation, right? Japan would be really uh, right market for you because it's not so much competitive and it's not like there is no price competition. If they see you have really good technology and good uh, business idea, uh, I think Japanese companies would be a really good partner for you to co-develop it together in the long run, which is very important for innovation. Uh, if you are aiming for, for example, fast growth, like, uh, you know, business, maybe it's difficult because, um, as I said before, until project starts, it takes time. But once it starts, and then it runs faster and it's more stable long term, right? So if you want to have successful business in Japan, have a longer vision and see uh, what benefits you can get from this market, which you cannot get, for example, from other markets. It has its uh, pros and cons, but uh, it definitely depends on you business model, right? Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Kassi. Right, uh, so I would say customer acquisition. Um, of course, like uh, if you wanna make your business sustainable, you need uh, customers. And then uh, customer behaviors, customer like behavior patterns, customer preferences are obviously different, you know, in every economy. And in Japan's got a very unique, you know, uh, customer, of course, preferences. So. Um, I don't know how many, exactly how many, but uh, as long as you have a, a customer that uh, makes your business sustainable within Japan, I think that's a pretty much measurement of uh, uh, your business's success. And then, uh, for, for, for example, the Google, I'm using Gmail, I'm using Google, you know, uh, uh, tool, like everywhere, I'm using Salesforce, and then Actually, there are many, many examples of being uh, like of overseas companies being successful in Japan. So uh, I see the possibility uh, uh, for, for you, you know, to, to come to Japan and be successful. Uh, so um, that's like uh, my, my say, uh, yes. Great, okay, lots of encouragements, I see. Another, Commonly asked question I see here on the chat platform is regarding visas. Perhaps if you guys happen to have that specific knowledge, would you know about any special visas for startup ventures or any visa or entry requirements to do business in Japan in general? So I should answer this maybe as Congressman doesn't need visa. Um, yes, uh, recently Shibuya City started to give a uh, startup visa definitely check startup visa shibuya and you can get all the information on google but uh, mm -hmm. there is if you want to run your business in japan you need 
business investors visa, which you need to show like your company's, you know, overview, business plan. And if you have like already clients, you know, that shows that you can cover your costs here, that's the first thing they check, right? If you have sustainable business to cover your expenses, then uh, you can get business visa. But it's really uh, a lot of paperwork, as I said before, just hire, uh, you know, someone local expert who can handle the uh, visa procedures. And uh, if you want to hire people from abroad, you need a working visa, which uh, basically requires to show your mainly documents from the company side, like how company is doing financially. If they see the company can support these employees' salary stably, then they can give to your employees from abroad working visa. So I would say um, now Japanese government, as I said, uh, like Minister of Economy is trying to create new types of visa, but uh, they're still not like made, of course. Um, yeah, definitely check Shibuya startup visa and then the existing business investors visa and working visas. I see. Hirsuke san, do you happen to have any comments with regards to this? Uh, actually, yesterday at the yesterday Thursday gathering, I was talking to a person who came to Japan with the startup visa. And then he actually he came to Japan through the introduction of uh, Jetro. And then Jetro is uh, very much um, active uh, in terms of uh, you know promoting startup visa all around the world. So uh, if you're interested in the visa, uh, Jetro might be a person mm. uh, organization you might want to talk to uh that's mm -hmm. like a, that, that's probably the thing that i mm -hmm. know yeah about about it i see well okay all right we have reached the end of this specific panel discussion thank you so much again mr Vila and yusuke san for being present today we have enjoyed hearing from you and you. we hope to stay in touch in the future as well wishing you the best of success Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank All right. You. So moving forward, next slide, please. We will be finally having our recorded lecture by Mr. Kimura Yuichi. He's not here with us today, but he will be still giving us a few messages on open innovation regarding Japanese CBCs. Next slide, please. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm Yuichi Kimura from NTT Dokon Ventures. I'm in charge of investing and corporate venture fund planning activities for NTT Dokon Ventures. And I'm very, very glad to be here to share our current activities with you. NTT Dokon Ventures is the corporate venture capital arm of NTT Group. NTT Group is a telecom conglomerate group company, originally connected to businesses, and now expanding upper layer businesses, such as IT services and cloud businesses for both enterprises and consumers. Our mission is to find innovation from startup community and support to build a strategic relationship between startups and NTT group companies. So we want to be in the middle of both sides at the, at the catalyst and uh, interface. We have mainly three activities, startup investment, business development, and incubation support. And today, I want to explain our startup investment and the collaboration business synergy creation. First, we started startup investment in 2008. And then we continue to manage venture funds in the total amount of approximately 850 million US dollars. 
That is actually one of the largest CVC funds in Japan. The fund money is, is from MTT Holdings and MTT Docomo, which means real strategic money. We cover globally, mainly focusing on Japan, US, EU, and Israel by two office locations, Tokyo and Menlo Park in California. As per US activities, our Menlo Park office is in charge. So far, we invest in more than 160 companies globally, and about the 40% are overseas companies, mainly US-based companies. Our global investment perspective is to explore advanced technology, digital transformation solution, and a new business model being ahead of Japan. And we want to bring them to Japan. And I think USA is definitely our best innovation source. From next slide, I want to explain about our business development activities. This slide shows some achievements on our business development. On the top left of the image, that was a collaboration between NTT Docomo and the Japan st Japanese startup. NTT Docomo provides live streaming video with EC site linking. During audiences watching on the live video, and if they want to buy goods on the screen, just click on the goods on the screen. Then they can access to e-commerce site directory and library. NG Docomo makes this to happen via our investment and facilitation. We'd like to create this kind of meaningful collaboration more. This slide is different viewpoint of our achievement. After investing in startups, we talk with relevant organization of NTT group. When they want to work more closely and have some ownership, we transfer our holding shares to such organization. This slide is our general process to involve startup companies overseas. In general, there are three steps to enter into Japan market researching Japan market, designing Japan strategy, and entering Japan market. Each step has each requirement, as you can imagine, such as understanding the Japan market, the level of demand, the size of the market, competitive landscape to consider Japan market is attractive or not. If the market is available, Startup companies need to consider how to access a market with high ROI. Our typical case to involve is the startup companies are expanding APAC region already with the already regional regional manager and have interest in Japan market, but not having Japan country manager and not having collaboration partners in Japan yet. When we explore a possible collaboration with overseas startup companies, we work with them closely by each step. I want to share some actual projects. First sample is a developer of a directory as a service platform designed to centralize and simplify identity management. What we did first is that we invited them to our conferences named MTC Docom Ventures Day and Docomo Open House to talk with Japanese enterprises. Also, we conducted some market research and shared the result with them to understand the market. Then discuss partnership strategy and introduce some possible partners leveraging NTT Group Network. 
after our investment, they hired a Japanese country manager and started localization with local partners. Second sample is a developer of remote collaboration platform designed to conduct remote inspections, training, and other site-specific meetings using 360-degree camera. First, we introduced some MTT group companies to understand demands and the competitive landscape. Also, arrange some demonstration opportunities to access people who are engaged in 5G businesses of NTG Docomo. Then, we discuss some POC project and facilitate NTT group to be their business partners. Finally, NTT group become business partners in Japan and Southeast Asia region. Third sample is a developer of AI-powered drones designed to deliver power and flying cameras without much complexity. Collaborating with NTT Docomo's business unit, we conducted several POCs with our enterprise customers. After that, NTT Docomo started to collaborate with them for selling their products as one of their product lineup handling Japan regulation matters, and designing product offerings fit with regulations, and exploring customers. Finally, NT Tokomo commercialized their products as NT Tokomo's brand products named Docomo Sky. Also start their certification course. Actually, this is a very, very successful sample for both startup and us. Our story is to transform the global landscape by uniting startup, startups great business idea and execution power and NTT groups implementing and deploying, deploying power in Japan. We want to create huge impact to change the world. I hope this presentation is some informative for you to understand Japan startup ecosystem. Thank you very much and have a great day. That was a magnificent presentation again. Hope all of you got some notes out of that. And as mentioned, Please keep your questions because we will be able to answer them via email. More than happy to assist you with that later on. So now switching gears specifically to one of our pretty important components of this presentation, I would say as well. We will have TMG presenting some of the support programs we have for you today. Ms. Fujita-san. Thank you so much for being here today again. Will you do the honor, please? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our event today. I'm Fujita Megumi, a director of Invest, Invest Tokyo program at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, TMG for short. Invest Tokyo program is a series of support programs to attract leading companies and startups from around the world. I'm very pleased to talk about our program today. This slide shows from left to right, the slide, please. Yes, this slide shows uh, from left to right, the process of how foreign companies enter the Tokyo's market and start doing business. And we provide various services along this process. Today's event covers number one, PR event. If you would like to learn more about our service, please contact Access to Tokyo. Access to Tokyo, which is called A2T, will be your first touch point of our, of our service. We have offices in four cities, San Francisco, London, Paris, and Singapore. San Francisco office is the closest 
to New York. And it is represented by today's MC Martin. So if you have any questions, please contact him. A2T members, including Martin, will provide you with insights about the Japanese market and explain various support options. Also in this session, we would like to introduce our free consulting service for tech and fintech companies who are willing to set up an office in Tokyo. It is a tailored service based on your needs and factors that affect your decision, decision making for business expansion into Tokyo. In many cases, companies request us to support market analysis and entry strategy planning, which are highlighted in dark blue, but we can also support business partner identification, office search and registration and incorporation ident indicated in light blue. Uh, let me explain about the process of this service more in detail. First of all, please contact A2T to learn more about our service and conditions. This program is uh, on a selection basis. And so after applying, selected applicants uh, will be ask, asked to fill out the support request form to receive free support for one to two months. After that, uh, based on the findings from our service, uh, please decide whether or not you would like to expand your business into Tokyo. If you decide expand to expand into Tokyo, please agree to and sign the investment plan and submit it to TMG. Once again, you can customize the content of our support based on what you want and what you need <clears throat> in order to make decisions on your expansion into Tokyo. Also, we have another support program called BDCT, which stands for Business Development Center Tokyo. And its target ranges from the companies who are interested in uh, doing business in Tokyo to those who have already set up offices in Tokyo. And BDCT can support not only the business side, but also living side in Tokyo, such as education, medical institutions, and so on. About Tokyo One-Stop Business Established Center, TASBEC for short, this is a one-stop shop for restoration and incorporation. It is especially for the companies who are considering to set up offices in Tokyo or who already set up them. Partnership support is a program for foreign companies that have already received the TMG support. We promote business matching between these foreign companies and Japanese companies in Tokyo. Lastly, Tokyo Consortium on the far right is what I introduced in the panel, panel discussion today. So far, I told you so much information about our support programs, but I sincerely hope that you are encouraged to consider about uh, consider business expansion into Tokyo. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Martin. And lastly, next slide, please. Let me briefly introduce an event called uh, City Tech Tokyo which aims to realize a sustainable society with startups through open innovation. It will be held in February next year, and we are now accepting applications uh, for the pitch contest participants and booth exhibitors. If you are interested in this event, please visit the website. Thank you very much once again for attending our event today. Oh, Megumi-san, thank you so much again for your participation today. That was a wonderful presentation regarding some of our support programs. So as mentioned, we will now be taking some questions regarding FCS or any other program that you may want to inquire about. Please feel free to ask us now. We will be able to answer just a few of these. All right, so we, we have some questions here. Let's take a, a few of them. Ms. Megumi-san would also appreciate your, your support here if you happen to have the answer to this one. 
So there, the person is inquiring regarding the first step, and again, in expanding their business into the Tokyo market. I believe also this question was previously answered in one of our panel discussions. But Mr. Mumi Sam, do you happen to have any feedback with regards to this? Well, just to recapitulate then, one possible answer to this question would be to first be in the lookout for those specific institutions, such as the ones that have participated today, right? Because they will be able to introduce you first to this specific circle and ecosystem of startups. And from then, based on these discussions and based on you taking this concrete action on entering Tokyo, you will be able to hear more regarding what there is to do. And of course, with regards also to one of the questions that we have been posed here regarding language and culture, there are some support programs that we have in store just for you. These are some of the ones that Ms. Mikomisan has mentioned, because we know for a fact that a lot of you also wonder, oh, but do you need to speak Japanese? What are you going to do with regards to that or the business culture? We are also more than happy to assist you with regards to that. We have a full team dedicated to you from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. And yes, thank you so much. All right, so let us now move ahead with the very last part of our presentation today. We just want to briefly tell you more about this new e-magazine that we have just for you. It's called Tokyo Updates. Here, you will be able to learn more about not only today's novelties with regards to technology, as we know that Tokyo is a special hub for that, but also to all, to all of those out there who are interested in the culture with regards to anything ranging from anime to the cuisine. We have all of this ready for you. If you would be interested, please take a look at the QR code that we have down there and you have absolute access to this specific content. And moving right ahead into our next slide, please. Yes, so for our very last component and agenda item of the day, we would love to give you one last questionnaire, specifically with regards to what your thoughts are regarding this webinar. Have we been able to assist you in the best possible way? We'd love to hear from you. So please, I'll be launching the poll now. Give you a few minutes to answer this. So again, we would love to hear more regarding what your thoughts are regarding today's presentation, just for you. Which one of the agenda items that you end up liking most? Which one was the most informative? Which was, which was uh, perhaps really the first panel discussion, most people said that, that that's the one that they were interested in. Was it perhaps another part of it, perhaps a discussion about Entity Docomo? Please let us know your thoughts in this questionnaire. And thank you. Give you just a few more minutes to look at these questions. So again, for those of you who are interested, who are lovers of Japanese culture, really just want to give you one last uh, indication regarding Tokyo updates. Again, our e-magazine that we have just for you, you will be able to hear more stories, read more articles, and just stay on top of the news regarding today's um, most important advancements in technology and novelties in general. Also to learn more about the culture, if that's what you're interested in. So please check out Tokyo updates. We'll be able to throw more information to you for those Japanese culture lovers out there. All right, so that seems to be then the end of not only this poll, but also our presentation here today. I don't wanna leave before thanking everyone again for their magnificent contribution in this event today, starting from Mr. Kokunaga, Ms. Siegel, Mr. JF, Yusuke-san, of course, Ms. Abedova, Mr. Yuchi-san, who wasn't here today, but still very much appreciated. And last but not least, Megumi-san, I really appreciate your participation here today. Thank you for your wonderful feedback. And to you, our dear audience as well, we hope that you have garnered the most information from this presentation as well. 
please feel free to email me directly to a2tsanfrancisco at accenture.com or also please feel free to just send me an email directly to andre.akihiflores at accenture.com. It's been a pleasure being your MC here today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimasu.